I remember there was a, a point in um, at the beginning of the pandemic where where people's packages were getting delayed. Like even Amazon was sending delayed packages, and there was somebody who was so angry. Like my customer service rep didn't know how to respond. She was like berating her and X, Y, and Z. And I just wrote this response where I was like, "We completely understand your frustration. However, we do acknowledge that we are in a situation where thousands of Americans are dying." on a daily basis because of this pandemic and it's disrupting multiple supply chains because these fulfillment centers are doing their best to keep their employees safe. Mm. Right. Hi everybody, this is Sita and Garrett from On From Idea to Invention, a podcast for inventors and small businesses. Look, I did it without even reading the sign. Oh, that's good. That's pretty good, huh? Right, I you. Right, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm Sita. I'm and Garrett. this is Garrett. And we have with us today, Yalista. Okay, mm. you know what? Because I, I say Yalista, I don't know if that's right. But you know how- I say Yalitza. Yalitza, okay. Look, I see Yali- you. Pre- Yalitza. Yalitza. Oh. Yalitza, Yalitza. It's Yalitza. My mom says Yalitza. Okay. No, actually, she doesn't. What does mom say? I think she's like, Yelitsa. She's like, okay. What is she? What is because that that has an accent. She's from, she's from the island. Ah, I got you. I got you. So so I want to say it as pretty as mom says it. So Yelitsa, right? Yes. Okay. Yelitsa. Yeah. Yelitsa. Um, is here with I don't even know your last name. Charles. Oh, Jean, Jean Charles. Oh, that Jean is Charles. a lot. Yes. Yeah. Say your name like <laughs> Is like, it John Charles? It no? is, it is, but I don't say it like that. Oh, my bad. Okay, how do you say it? I just say Jean Charles. <laughs> <laughs> you can't have all so. that for a first name and just be like Jean Charles. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I can in America. Yeah, you can't. But you know what? You know what? Because that 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 is a wonderful name from start to finish. Do you so, have a middle name too? No, my parents decided to spare me. Okay, because that would have been a lot of letters. Okay. <laughs> did, I, did I miss? Did you say where your parents were from? They're from Haiti. That's what. Okay. 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 So I guarantee your parents don't pronounce it Jean. Jean, not at all. Like if you say that J, <laughs> some. <laughs> They'd be like, who? Right, right. <laughs> who you talking about? Elisa, you know that's not her last name. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. So she is here today, and I think it, it's so interesting um, how our relationship kind of has developed um, because we've been like cyber friends, I guess, for a long time. You started, because she is the C- founder and CEO of Healthy Roots Doll. <laughs> are there sound effects yes <laughs> yes yes with the hands yes and um i think we probably start our companies around the same time but i'm i'm really? going yeah i think so we'll see because i feel like i was you guys were one of the businesses i was like yeah they're doing great i'm gonna like try to be like them <laughs> like, oh get out that makes me feel like a great big sister right, right there right. <laughs> but i really think it was around the same time but i'm gonna let you kind of um Tell us your journey, how it got, how, you know, how all Healthy Roots Doll came about. Oh, yeah. So my name is Yulitza. I'm the CEO and founder of Healthy Roots Dolls. Started it in my undergrad while I was studying illustration at the Rhode Island School of Design. And I think similar to your own company, it was started out of a pain point that I had personally with my hair and the products that I grew up with. So having been a little girl and my mom, you know, taking the time to like braid my hair and making me feel like this beautiful princess, but then growing up and not seeing women celebrated as beautiful with hair like me and feeling differently. So getting to college and, you know, finally having the language to unpack the experiences I had growing up and realizing how important representation is in children's play Mm. and deciding that that's what I wanted to focus my work on. So I took Rapunzel and I redesigned her into a little brown girl with kinky curly hair for one of my class projects. And a lot of my peers said, wow, this looks like a doll. Have you thought about making a doll? And I was like, no, <laughs> like I didn't, I, I'm paying all this money to come here and make dolls. Right. Um, <laughs> but I mean, I what went to we art don't design know, school. What we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so I was, I ultimately wanted to go into children's publishing. So like the book side of things, but 
um, I had a conversation on Facebook with a bunch of peers and a hundred comments later realized that there was a shared experience around not having dolls that look like us or not having hair like us or, you know, the options just weren't that great. And so I just, I applied for this Brown University Social Innovation Fellowship through my school, Rhode Island School of Design, and they gave me $4,000 to develop Healthy Roots dolls, which but at that time I defined as a doll that teaches girls to love their natural hair. Um, and then went into the Mass Challenge Accelerator program where I launched a Kickstarter campaign generating $50,000 in pre-sales for our first doll. Then I went into two years of research and development to learn how you make a physical product, which is really, really hard. And then um, launched that doll, got tons of feedback from customers, redesigned her, and then launched that redesign in partnership with My Black, My Black is Beautiful um, from PNG, so the doll came with like these hair products for a special limited time, which it no longer does, just in case anybody tries to ask me. <laughs> like, nope, nope, and nope. <laughs> no. <laughs> and we got tons of great feedback from that experience, you know, kids washing the doll's hair with it. And then we took that feedback, made some a few changes and adjustments to the doll that you see now today. But that's ultimately how we got started, is me having an idea, um, going to the internet for validation and then using the internet to continue to grow the business um, and really focusing on building a really great product and a really great brand. And I was able to do that by also doing pitch competitions, which is how I raised most of my money. So doing pitch competitions, winning grants, and then some investment um, from strategic partners. Okay, we can call it a day. I mean, it's <laughs> like, <laughs> drop the mic. Yeah, right, but, right. <laughs> That, that, no, we can talk about amazing. it. But, but that's, that's amazing. That's a lot, though. But, I know but, it's but a lot. If 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 those didn't, if they didn't hear. She she, you list the she went, went through the went proper through the way, proper steps mm -hmm. of how so you could have taught us how, how, how to take an idea, <laughs> literally an idea, idea, to invention, but mm -hmm. and, and and really gave a clear understanding because how much how long would you say it took you from the moment, right, that you were in your class, right, mm -hmm. and, and everybody's like, oh, that's a good idea, girl. And <laughs> from that moment to when you actually had a physical product to sell, what, how would, what's that time? That was like three, four years. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right? And, and so in reality, right, that's a, and that's pretty standard, you would think. Is it? I yes. feel like it's easier for other people who can get capital to do the things, right? Yes. If, if you can get capital. Yeah, but the other people, <laughs> the other people come in with, 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 you know, you know, dad gave me $50,000. Exactly. This, yeah. Which we're for like. For the people who like, yeah, they have the friends and family, people who right. are bootstrapped though, who have to build it on their own. It's going to take you a bit more time. It takes you longer. Right. It takes you longer, point blank. But even then, I think society has you believe that it should be faster than that mm. and my thing is with the way you did it you did your due diligence to make sure that your your product and your brand and you know your company will have longevity outside the launch you know what i mean and a lot of us you know are made to believe that it should happen quick you know it's no. just to add water and stir and it's like mm. well that I mean that that happens quick comes from People only seeing the end result. The end result, right. Oh Watching my God. too much Let, Shark Tank. I was going to say, because we're closer to having existed for 10 years. Right. Like, yeah, like we're, we're getting, it's like three or four years from now is going to be 10 years since I started working on this. And I'm really going to see the results of the compounding effect of all mm -hmm. the things that I've been doing. Mm -hmm. But for other people, they see it now and they're like, oh, wow, that's so cool. They're like, no, 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 no. I've been doing this right, right. since 2014. <laughs> right. And then you get those. You know, I've been thinking about putting together a doll. Do you do you have any advice? It's like mm, you don't have to sit down for a little while because it, 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 you right. know it's it's more than just you know there's there's a lot more in it to just having the idea and thinking that people will want it. Right. I mean, she did all the steps of you know testing the market, seeing if there was a need, and all of that. And which that that does not come. At least for, for us, it made sense in my mind to test the market, but there was no class to say, this is what you should do. You know, these are the steps in order to, to vet, I mean, to, to not vet, but to... Um, these get proof are of things, concept. Right, right, fulfill, to, to do, get proof of concept. Right. And, you know, I'm, a lot of that is like 
nothing but the grace of God, we did it. But no <laughs> one from, you know, back in 20, what is it? 2013. 2013 was like, here's the class. Well, that, but, but that's the, well, the class is doing it. Right. That's what I'm saying. You're, you're doing it in, in, in real time. Like I just got, fin I just took a class at Cornell. Um, did you hear that? Yeah, you're gonna say it. You're gonna, you're gonna run that <laughs> until it runs dry. But did go you, ahead. Did, I just want to make sure you, you heard that it was Cornell. Um, I just took an entrepreneur class at Cornell. Um, that was like did did so much so did such for my self esteem to know that okay the process that we did is what it should have been. It just was by the grace of God. That's what we did. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, you've been learning in real time like what are the some what are some of the things that like really did like take you for a loop that it just was like uh maybe like you know the left hook you're like didn't see that coming bro all the all the back end all the admin yeah. taxes filings yeah, corporations yeah. you know submit this updated document for x y and z i'm like what right <laughs> <laughs> every year it's a new document like i didn't yeah you owe four of these wait i don't want to right <laughs> What? Nobody <laughs> told me I know what these for. Yeah. First of all, yeah. Nobody gives you a rubric of like every month you have to submit this form and like mm -hmm. all those things. Like, and so whenever I work with a new partner, I reach a new level. There's new like requirements, mm -hmm. and the you literally it only becomes a problem when you need it. Yeah. <laughs> like mm -hmm. nobody tells you to prepare for it. Like your insurance rates go up for when you produce more products and the testing requirements and all yeah. those different things. So yeah, I, I got a question, right? Um. You building your building your team, right? Because at the beginning it started with just you and your idea. Yeah. Help, walk us through and walk our audience through about building your team and, and and the importance of making sure you have the right people for your team in order for you to get to where you're at today. Yeah. You, you've had to have some key pieces fall into place. Help us understand how that journey was. So in addition to having my own vision for the product. Um, I had to learn what I didn't know and what I did know in order to help me figure out who to find to support me. Mm -hmm. And so I, I was fortunate enough to, you know, come from a design background. But one of the first things I really had to learn was how to ask for help and how to seek information. I think one thing that a lot of people struggle with is the inability to help oneself. Mm -hmm. So if you have a question, you should be able to try to answer that question yourself. And that means utilizing every resource you have available to you. So I was on my college's institution, like I was at school. So like I would go to the library and I would, you know, look up professors and like, oh, this person used to work at Hasbro. Let me talk to them and see what did it. And then like, you know, get recommendations on like, oh, I have to file this entity. Schools have law clinics where the students are learning how to do those things for free. Let me go do those things. Mm -hmm. And so I would exhaust all resources that I had personally and then that's when I would go out and see like through my network and through events that were relevant to my company or, you know, business building, et cetera, the SB, what, what's it called? SBA, yeah. small businesses. SB. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Those kinds of things like go talk to those people. And while they might not be helpful for you now, they can point you in the right direction because you don't really know what you're doing yet. Mm -hmm. um, and so in terms of team building, one of the other things I had to do was I had to learn to let things go. I spent a lot of time holding myself back by trying to do everything, everything. myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you're like the S on my chest is getting rusted. <laughs> <laughs> I used to have like so many 3 a.m. nights, and now I go to like now I'm like I want to be in bed at nine. Mm -hmm. like, that's it. Like I'm not emailing no manufacturers. I'm not doing because I have I've delegated, so I had to learn how to delegate. And then for me, it started with interns, so people who were hungry and like interested in learning a specific skill. And so I'd be like, okay, cool. You want to learn about managing social media? I can allocate this many hours to it and you can come onto the team. And it allowed me to not, it not only allowed them to learn, but allowed yeah. me to learn how to like manage a person and like delegate to somebody else. And then I started with contractors. And so I needed help with web development. Let me go find a qualified contractor through referrals of my network and in these different Facebook groups that I was in or even, you know, like Upwork and things like, so like it always started with Google. It was like where to find <laughs> websites mm -hmm. <laughs> or, you know, literally using my social media platforms to go on Facebook and be like, hey, does anyone have a web developer that they could recommend for such and such programs to do such and such? Um, and so that took some time. But then the other thing that I was also doing was I had a ton of mentors. Um, and people always ask me, like, how do you get mentors? And it's like, you tell somebody you need help. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yep. 
You say help. So simple. <laughs> and you know, they might take pity on you and have some extra time because they want to give back in some way. And so because I was a student, I had a lot of access to people who like wanted to personally invest in my potential or like really connected to my mission or were already successful and had time to give back. Yeah. And so they would, you know, talk to me on a regular basis. But it wasn't just me being like, yeah, so I'm doing X, Y, and Z. It was like, no, like I have an agenda. Like, okay, so here's what I'm working on. Here's what I'm trying to do. Do you know somebody that can do this? Because you can't help people if you don't tell them how to help you. Right. I think a lot of people get confused. They're like, I'm just going to talk to you. Like, can can we connect? About what? <laughs> what do you want to connect about? Just ask me for what you want. Right, right. Yeah. Be yeah. direct. <laughs> I mean, don't just like, don't just email people demanding things, but like be clear about the intentions and like what you need because people cannot help you if you don't ask them. So like I have like mm -hmm. younger people now who will reach out to me thinking I'm successful. I don't know where they got that idea from. <laughs> But I'll be like, yeah, you know, this is what I did. Or <laughs> I'm just like, they, I think they look at me as bigger than I am. Like, I'm still figuring things out too, you know? And so I'll point them in the right direction and show them the resources that I use and like share knowledge with them or try to help them solve problems with the amount of time that I can. Um, but yeah, that's mainly how I did it. I supported myself with mentors and advisors, um, utilizing resources online like YouTube University, um, and then the programs that I had available through my institution and through my peers. So let me ask this, because we have, we never used the, what was the intern experience like? Because I've been so afraid to use interns, right? I saw the eyebrows um, go up and down. <laughs> and it's, a, there, it's, it's one of those things, it's like, okay, are we, I know there's always, especially are they paid interns, are they free? Give us your intern experience to help enlighten us. So, so I had how many interns? I think there was at a point where I had three interns. One of them was paid, and then one of them was supported through a college, a college in the city that I lived at. And then another one was just somebody who was transitioning careers and wanted to, you know, have something on their resume to say like I did X, Y, and Z. And it was interesting because I hadn't learned how to delegate yet. But a lot of the work that I had the interns doing um, with me is actually part of the foundation for the team that I have now. Like a lot of those, you know, con the calendars, the content calendars that were created or like the drafts for like templates and things and systems and like Asana that we're using for task management and things like that. And like now how we have this huge Slack that we have with all these different channels and our Google Drive with all these different fold folders and assets that are pre-organized. Those were things that were built by working with somebody else mm -hmm. to get those things built out and learning about communication and like how to manage expectations and cre create ways for them to, e to easily transfer knowledge to them. Um, so that was my intern experience. It wasn't always great because they're interns. They don't have the information that you necessarily, they're not gonna do it the way that you do it. So there has to be a margin of grace that you allow. So I, that. I would margin definitely- of grace. Mm, that's a t-shirt. <laughs> Go ahead, Yalista. <laughs> margin of grace don't, she don't, says don't she... say don't like don't be upset i'll say buy your you know buy right, your right, list, list. Script, buy your right but that's gonna be a t-shirt margin you know just a little bit mm -hmm. she says as uh, she's very critical of everything <laughs> <laughs> but i that's an internal reminder for myself like yulitsa come on now that you've been doing this for five years they just got here, just got here. and so allocating specific tasks that can have that margin so like in marketing inserts for packaging that's that has a hard deadline not there's no margin there so i can't let you work on that but i can have you work on something else that's long term and we can work together on it and so allocating time to work with those interns because internships are not just about interns creating value for your company but also you creating value for them and their professional development and i guess too i never really interned and i get for did you ever intern yes free uh, yeah. And when did yeah. this happen? I've been knowing I, you I, since I college. When did you? Well, intern? and that's the thing. So I, I interned, and it was it was free, but it was tied to my senior project in engineering. Aye. Like a co-op or something? Yeah, it was a it was it was a co-op slash intern to where it wasn't like a um, I took a whole semester, but it was part of my senior program, my senior project, mm -hmm. and so I worked at this aerospace company, and they helped me in, in turn create my my senior project see look at the value and look where you are now see, see? you see the growth <laughs> or what are you trying to say intern. i didn't intern <laughs> <laughs> i never interned 
I could be so much further. And yet you still. (laughs) I never got internships, but that was also because I was pretty directionless. Hmm. No, you had direction. Right. You had direction. You just. For me. (laughs) For what I want to do for myself. (laughs) Pretty directionless. I think you had it. You just hadn't brought it to the surface yet. Yeah, I mean, I've talked about this before. I was a terrible employee. That was not a good employee. No, here, me and you, that's the, I'm a terrible employee. That's why I'm a boss. That's oh another God. t-shirt. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and is that how it works? Yes, because what happens is, like, for the fact that I know I do not work well with others. I work well by myself or I support others. But when it comes to, like, office politics and, and you know, all the ups and downs and emotional stuff mm-hmm. that's tied to people jockeying for power and all that stuff. I'm like, yeah. that was know? my struggle. I was like, I just came here to do my job. Right. And that's it. About right. I don't want to do, I don't want to, I don't want to know you. I, I love you better if I don't know you that deeply to fact that I know your insecurities and all that. It was like, and it sounds terrible, but that's what it is. It's like, I, I really didn't want to be, so I freelanced all my life, you know, freelance, because that's what we had, and that was another thing we had in common, because she's an illustrator, and I'm a graphic designer, so we were like, yeah, we, you know. Do you still you, do a lot of the creative work for the company? I did all of the creative work. Right now? Until, no, now I'm the, now I'm the creative director, look. I got, okay, I got a new that, title. How did that go? It do is, you just, like, review things? Oh, girl, it's, it's the life. It is the life. And I, that was like three, two years ago. I'm sorry, I didn't kick the table. Um, two years ago, that's, I decided, not decided, it became clear, Sita, you need a team. You need a creative team. You cannot keep on doing what, you can't keep supporting the growth of the company and where all you want it to take, go by yourself. And also keep everything looking fresh and bringing fresh ideas because look, mm. I'm probably as old as your mom. And it was like, there are certain things that I'm removed from because I'm just not in that, I'm not in that world. I'm not not a millennial. I don't know the way millennials Mm -hmm. think. I'm not, yeah, millennials are right under us, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not a Gen Zer. I'm not, and they have money. They have literally, and especially after I saw Fire Festival, they have (laughs) money to burn. And as long as you're sending the message that they want to hear, they're like, I'm all on it. I'm all about it. So it was like, okay, I, and especially, you know, knowing how social media is such a big part of business now, you know, from, from the beginning, I was like, social media is, I, I don't care for it because it's fickle. It's not real. It's, you know, it's all make-believe and pretend. But then I had to learn how to wrap my, ra- my, wrap my brain around the value and the importance of it. But at the yeah. same time, I knew that that wasn't my lane. And I didn't know necessarily how to effectively communicate right. to those people who do use that as a you know large part of their their yeah. culture and their life. Yeah. So it was like, okay, Sita, you have to realize you need a team. You can lead and you can make sure that you express to them that what your vision is, but you I'm one of those people who I believe everybody has something to bring to the table and my thing is is valuing for what valuing you for what you see that I cannot see. So that's been really, really, really helpful. And I mean right now we we're I've got um a creative manager which is he is just amazing. And then I we have an amazing um graphic designer. She's had one year, like one or two years of experience out of school. Mm -hmm. So and then I had another graphic designer who was fresh out of school. And she, the talent was there, but the work ethic was not there. Mm. And the adherence to um, deadlines and things. And you know, when you got dead, it's not corporate deadlines are totally different than small business deadlines. Small business deadlines are deadlines. They don't have the padding (laughs) of, you know what, well, so-and-so has to approve it. And this person, other person has to look through it. And that, you know, we don't have to get five or seven approvals. It's, if it's due then, if it's It's due due here, it's due here. And if it's due, if it's due at this time and it's not going to be there, then you got to let me know and I'll do whatever massaging we need to do in order, you know, not to, um, not to let the, you know, the project, the project to go downward. But my thing is you don't have, you don't have the time for the non-communication. Like everybody has, you got to tell me, 
I'm not going to be able to have it. I done need you to overstand me. Right, right, I right. Overstand, not understand. Yeah, wow, I like God, that. That's another T-shirt. Girl, you can I need you to overstand me. <laughs> Girl, I'm going to have to give you a commission on these. <laughs> um, but you know what I mean? It's like, you know what? Let's, let's, my whole thing is let's be transparent. If I'm giving you more than you can handle, let me know. Mm. Because we can work it out to say, you know, so you can you can thrive at what you do and you're not overly burdened. But I can't do that if you don't tell me what's going on. And I think that was the part that kind of like I had the fear of interns because it's like, okay, I can't manage you because I'm so busy. But now maybe it might be easier because we have people in between where we are and the intern. Yeah. So. It's one of those things I know there's a lot of there's a lot of busy work to do, but I was always afraid. I was like, that's going to it's one of those things. If I got if I got to manage you on doing it, then I might as well do it myself and I'll get it done quicker. And that was but I, I that think, was the thing that kind of, yeah, you know, it's hard for me to get past. But now it's different because you have, yeah. you have somebody that would be between between you, right. that you that you trust. Right. I don't right. have to be so scared. Right. And, mm-hmm. and you know, he he understands your expectations right and he'll see something first be like yeah no she will not like this thank you go back okay and so <clears throat> so are you so from your team where's your team right Who's yeah your so team? How, how how big is your team where's your team because i know you personally live in in detroit detroit so, so help, help us understand your whole operation if possible so all my full-time team members are based in detroit so it's a it's a, it's a marketing team so you have a social media manager community manager content creator and then a junior art director, which is our graphic designer, visual assets creator for all intents and purposes. Um, and then we have a part-time COO. And then we have contractors or agencies that we work with for PR, um, for website development, for you know product design. And then we have, of course, like our manufacturing and supply chain. Gotcha. So how was it? How was it getting a part-time COO? And what is he? Or um, she it was. It was a really organic relationship. Um, so again, it was one of those things where I talk about the value of social media. So being a part of a lot of online communities, um, that centralizes like women in toys and designers and things like that. And organically connecting because she found my student portfolio and thought the work was beautiful. And because of the, you know, the business that I was building was really passionate about it and Mm -hmm. wanted to support and see the growth. And so she was a mentor and we had regular conversations about, you know, challenges that I was having and asking her for insights and advice and then ultimately um, bringing her on board for the project. And she's the reason why you see the beautiful doll we have today. Mm. Wow. Yes. That's awesome. Is she a brown girl too? Yes. yes. <laughs> she's tons of years of ex- Delany West, tons of experience in the toy industry. Um, she did ghost design work for Martha Stewart. She used to work for Faber-Castell as either like a vice president or like senior, she's got big titles. Awesome. <laughs> she's made a lot of the products that children love. Awesome. Really? Wow. So I have another question. Are yeah. you, you are, are you your own supply chain manager or you have one? It's me. Mm, that's what I thought. <laughs> Cause I was like, how did you find one? <laughs> Cause everything that everybody else right don't do, I do. Mm-hmm. Okay. Gotcha. I you hate it? Yeah, it's it's a different it world. So it's a different world, isn't it? And it feels like, like you got to stay on top of everything. Mm-hmm. And like there was once a point last year because I didn't I didn't know how to manage or automate everything where customers were emailing customer support and they're like my order hasn't been shipped yet and me looking into the back and like why are these orders not shipping and then me going to the warehouse website be like oh we ran out of boxes <laughs> because Yulitsa didn't order more boxes because Yulitsa didn't automate that. Oh. But you learn, you know, you it's learn. a lesson learned, right? Yes. And it's like, all right. But right. things that somebody else should be doing instead of me. Because you're so occupied doing everything else. You're like, oh. Right. God. You're occupied doing everything else. You're occupied being the face of the company, mm-hmm. right? You just got a lot of stuff going on. Man. Yeah. Okay. So is your warehouse, in distrib- so do you do your own fulfillment and so forth or? No, because we have a larger product um, and just like the storage and everything would be so crazy. And that's yeah. another thing I don't want to have to manage. We use a fulfillment service. Gotcha. How is that going? How do you, how do you, um, um, you know, three PLs are their own beast. Mm-hmm. Everybody's got different rates. Mm-hmm. Um, everybody's got different systems for charging fees for pallets and bins and receiving and returns and pick and pack. And this one is free and this one is not. And Oh, we lost your items. We got to recount. And just, okay. <laughs> 
yeah, it's interesting. And then with um, the way that things are right now because of COVID and everybody, you know, moving to online, a lot of 3PLs can't take on new clients and, and their surcharges and delays because everybody's shipping stuff right. and packages. The supply chain is crazy. Too, kind of crazy too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so now we're in a system where we're on pre-orders and I don't recommend pre-orders for businesses just because it can get really difficult to manage it. And then customers, you know, talk about like, I ordered this on this date. I haven't received any updates. It's like, we sent 12 emails. Saying, right, know why. right, right. <laughs> it said it right next to the button that you hit by now that this was a pre-order. Right? <laughs> you know, so just doing your best to communicate things to people. And it's, it's all a challenge. I remember there was a, a point in, um, at the beginning of the pandemic, where where people's packages were getting delayed like even amazon was sending delayed packages and there was somebody who was so angry like my customer service rep didn't know how to respond and she was like berating her and x y and z and i just wrote this response where i was like we completely understand your frustration however we do acknowledge that we are in a situation where thousands of americans are dying on a daily basis because of this pandemic and it's disrupting multiple supply chains because these fulfillment centers are doing their best to keep their employees safe <laughs> right like, and that's yeah, so right. you know thank you and god bless you <laughs> we are doing our best and we completely understand but, but this is what it is right this is a situation that everyone is in it's not like yes. it's just a, we are all in this in the same level of you know and i think that's just another situation of how the business owners and people managing you know communication with customers you have to help them overstand yeah. so be over communicative send more emails post on social media your updates mm -hmm. like if you have a firm shipping date communicate that um i've seen brands even go so far as to go like do behind the scenes and like here's how we work at our factory and who's who's making your products and here's what our, su our supply chain looks like for fulfillment and things like that mm -hmm. so the people can see just how much goes into it because once they understand that then they're like oh, oh now i now see why I get it. she's not making these in her living room <laughs> it's actually <laughs> the whole system oh, right right <laughs> Wow. Yeah, it helps. Awesome. Awesome. So speaking of that, you know, I am going to put in a little plug because speaking yeah, of, right. <laughs> are you want to plug I, it? I was just waiting. No, no, no. No, you, okay. You so just, you know, it's maybe worth a conversation later, but because of those types of issues and when it comes to dealing with small businesses and 3PLs, and we've had some good experiences and some bad experiences that we decided to open up to start a fulfillment services for spe specifically for small businesses. That's so, mad interesting because every time me and my friends complain about it, we're like, why don't we just do our own? <laughs> and that's the thing. You know what? If you need guidance to do your own, because I tell everybody fulfillment is not rocket science. It is totally not. And it's one of those things that it's it. We started we had a had a, a, a relationship that I'll say went bad um, mm. with a 3PL. And, you know, they did all they could do to service us in the beginning but you know you know small business have peaks and valleys of finances and especially when you're paying you know you got to pay for product you got to pay all the different you know and you have good months bad months or whatever and there was i guess pretty much they were out of grace which i can understand that for us but at the same time it was like once we decided to part ways i discovered so much of what was not being paid attention to because i was mm -hmm. a super small fish in a big pond of other giant fish. And it was yeah. like, those giant fish can, they can, you know, they can stand a, cartain, a carton or two to disappear. Me, the small fish, I yeah, cannot, border. I cannot have a where carton or stuff? two. Right, where my stuff? <laughs> Do I need to come in there and look for it myself? You know, or there was a situation where, you know, we were ordering more product, but then when we, we order more product, cause we're like, wow, seems like it's, you know, I thought there was an, at right. least three boxes sitting there but what and then we go after we you know the relationship ended and there's five boxes oh. of unpacaged product that never no, you know I, it, it wasn't five boxes when we was ended up, it was it, it was, was ridiculous almost three pallets worth of, of product product that according to them they were out of stock on so i'm ordering and replacing so you know it was like you know what eyes wide open i understand that i'm a small fish and you cannot pay attention to what my business is the way i need you to so, and it's, you know, and I understand because they've got, I totally could see it. And I was like, okay, but this just teaches me the lesson. Let's try this ourselves. Mm -hmm. So it literally went from our basement and having a, what do you call it? Storage a storage unit. unit that we used to go up to up the street 
having product in our garage, all of that. Then we went to what we thought we, we grew up once. This is our third move into our biggest, you know, our biggest warehouse that we've had yet. But it's like, okay, just the peace of mind and knowing that if you're losing money in any type of reason, it's because of something that you did, not necessarily mm-hmm. something that you've mm-hmm. put you, that responsibility and that you're paying somebody to look after your stuff. So I totally don't don't let it just be a thought of maybe we should do this do it like Either, honestly right do it i don't think it'll be cost effective for me to do my own fulfillment why because i gotta pay for the storage space then i gotta hire people to do all the stuff well but and, and that's but and then i have to, to negotiate to, rates and i don't think i can negotiate better rates than the three pls yeah you can yes you can it, okay but, but, it, but it, she, we're, we're also shipping a you're shipping a bigger item than we are my dins are bigger yeah but but, but she's she's speaking of the, the rates for for car- carriers. carriers and so forth the three pls when they negotiate those rates they're able to negotiate those rates because of um of the quantity that they're shipping out right no and, and i so, get that uh, i get that but you save in other places Okay, yeah. So what are you saying? Because you were, you were, you were. About you can to still negotiate that. rates. In other words, you still can no, negotiate I, I, rates. I understand that. Okay. I understand, but I'm, mm. I'm trying to figure out where you're headed. Where you are? You talking about Maiden, or are you talking about about her doing her own? What are you? Where are I'm you talking headed? about either one. If she needs like Maiden Smalls, which is our fulfillment service, um, it is a we are meant to be. A st- a, just a stop in your in your in your progress we're not trying <clears throat> to do be your fulfillment center necessarily forever we're just getting you to the point to where you have a safe place for your stuff that you know you're not one of 20,000 other customers and <clears throat> we can offer you rates and storage and everything else at a price that's more affordable because it's a smaller situation so eventually, we want you to uh, outgrow us, but we want you to outgrow us into your own fulfillment service. That's what that is. That's what it is. So many things for me to manage. But you know what? <laughs> it com- it, it, it's one step at a time because we didn't think yeah. we would be able to do it either. But, I mean, no. We knew we'd be able to do our fulfillment, own fulfillment service because we had, you know, it was like, shoot. All we need is technically more people and a little bit more space. And we kept growing in space, but we kept growing in space to, I think this is just enough. We weren't growing in space to like, all right, we're going to move here and then have move, have room to expand if we need to, because we, st- we were operating on the thought of, we'll only do the minimum of what needed, not <laughs> we'll go into with the idea of growth. Does we're, that make sense? We're, gonna, we're, inti- yeah. we're intentionally thinking of right. growing into what we're, where we're going into. Right. That people variable, though, managing people, I can't come in today, da 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 And we've been fortunate <laughs> enough not to have a lot of that, but people grew with us. And I think, too, but it's, because we have the different, it's a different mindset when. And, and I, I think it's all about how you. I, I think it's, it's all about each individual's mindset right mm-hmm. so so what you're you're um um worried about dealing with the people management piece that's why you have a coo mm-hmm. who is okay with dealing with people management right just like with everything else that you found the right person to help with that it's the same thing it's the same thing you find, find the right person that that's able to to manage that that part of your business for you and right now honestly i know with detroit you probably can get so many people that will be able to give you a grant or whatever to get space because it, but then I'd have to stay here. <laughs> no, they would have to stay there. Yeah. <laughs> Not and you. I, would have to, I have to come back over here every now and then. <laughs> every now and then it'll be fun. I can do it a now and then, but not all the time. But the thing is too, right now is a situation where, I mean, we're in a situation where people are looking for work. And people are looking for safe places. And if you provide that and you have people, because we tell people when in the beginning, look, we, when we hire, we're like, we're building a team. We're building a family. So this is not for you. This is not a place for you if you're only looking for a paycheck and you're just looking to come 
and bounce off to go to something else, we're looking to make everybody who stays with us millionaires. So with that in mind, you might start at this point, this rate right now, but I'm guarantee you, if you go the long haul with us, you ain't gonna have, you ain't gonna have nothing to worry about. So, I mean, it's, di it's just a different mindset because we've had people that, you know, you know, everybody has good and bad days, but ultimate, they're like, you know what, I believe in your vision. So, and, and not to say that people haven't fell off. I mean, there's some people that, you know, just, it just wasn't their time or wasn't, you know, wasn't for them. But ultimately. You just got to pivot and move. Yeah, you just, on. right. But it's, a, it, it's one of those <laughs> things to where I believe you can do it. It's, it's not as what the team that you've built, what you've built right now with all the other aspects that you, I mean, all the other positions and stuff that you've filled with people to take care of the stuff that you can't, fulfillment is about half of that. It's not the that difficult. Is my next, it's my next beast. It's not that hard. And if you need any type of, you know, <clears throat> coaching, coaching, advising, whatever, just please let us know because it's not. And that's the thing that black businesses, we advocate for us owning our own supply chain, as many of those assets, of those entities as we can. As and fulfillment fun. is one of those things that you can own yourself. Right. I feel that. Do you hear the gems, you guys? Do you hear? This is how you get mentors. <laughs> See how easy that was? Yes, yes. Hey, Ingrid, how much time do we have about? Ten minutes. Okay, ten we minutes. got 10 minutes left. So is there anything else? Is there, because you got a whole list of questions. No, is I Is there anything just, that, that um, um, on your list that we didn't cover? Oh, that we didn't cover? Mm -hmm. um, what would you say your keys, your keys out of, so from 2014 to now, right, seven, six, seven years, what, what are some key gems that you would attribute to your success? So key gems that I would attribute to my success is around 2018, where I like, sorry, excuse me. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> key gems that I would attribute to my success is around 2018, um, I wrote this Medium post where I said, uh, how I made 2018 my year by minding my damn business, literally. And what I mean by that is keeping my head down and focusing purely on building my business and anything else that wasn't on my list of things to do is a no. So re I like focused my time, my energy. It was, it was kind of isolating, but I built stronger relationships with people. Like I built a core group of like female founders or founders of color to talk to about problems. Um, I spent more time at home. I was cooking from home. I was spending more time working. I was spending more time problem solving, you know, connecting with mentors, attending events. It was a year where I was bouncing between programs. I, would, I remember I came back from a conference, packed up my car and drove eight hours to Durham, North Carolina to join the Startup Stampede Accelerator program, um, which I won and then went to Essence Fest after that and won another pitch competition where I got capital. And it just, it all, it was the compounding effect of dedicating myself to the work. And so that's, that's the one piece of advice that I have is, you know, it's so easy to say yes to everything. Start saying no to things that you know are not going to get you where you need to be. Yeah. That's good. All right, I like that. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's really it because I feel like, like people will always email me. Like, I was thinking about doing this. I was thinking about doing this. What are you going to get out of it? Right, right. In the end, what's your goal? And it took us, it took some, some, um, some, great advisors, counselors to say, you know what, you're starting, you got to start from the end and work backwards. What's your end goal? And what do you got to do in order to re achieve that goal instead of, hmm, I think I should do this. And wherever it ends up, it ends up. So yeah, that's, yeah, that's one of those, that, that, that type of clarity. Yeah. Mm, go so far. Mm. This has been <laughs> off it, uh, awesome. <laughs> so awesome. Lost all your words. Right, right. right. <laughs> um, so what is next? What's next for you in the Ooh, pandemic is, of things? So what's next for me with the pandemic and everything where so when the pandemic started, the first thing that I realized is, wow, this is an opportunity for us to double down on our customers because, um, you know, it's not something I've been able to do in the past, which is like have the time to, to talk like, to, them, right. to, talk mm -hmm, to them. Mm -hmm. Um, and they deserve to be talked to. Like we're trying yes. to build a relationship over <laughs> right, here. Right. Um, and also because it's a really challenging time. And I don't, while I don't have children, I know being at home all day with children can be mm. really challenging. I can yeah. get and some you, um, for you if you want. <laughs> borrow a couple. I got a nine-year-old right over here. 
in the next Ooh, room. I think I'm good. Virtual learning. <laughs> just in Ooh, case you want to hold on to Right. And just in case you want to practice, but go ahead. Um, but yeah, so knowing that about our customers and being a children's brand, like looking at ways like, okay, what can we do with Zoe to help entertain them? Like let's send them activity sheets. Let's create a Facebook group. Let's um, do weekly talks. So now we have a, we're going to do weekly talks in the Facebook group and we're going to do hair tutorials. And we have a couple other things can that we're working on. Can we sign up for on. a hair tutorial with Puff Cuff and, and Zoe? Because you know, yes. you know, yes. my Izzy, my niece. And Zo- that's a special kind of relationship that... <laughs> Love Zoe. Our community manager will reach out to you and then we'll bring you into the group. Awesome. Look, like, awesome. see how easy that was? Yeah. Just ask Maybe even and do you Facebook shall receive. Like Instagram live. Yes. All right. I'm Please game. Do. We need to show them how to use these products. It's amazing how many of our customers, like, they'll tell us in these groups how they struggle with their children's hair. Like, they don't even know what products to use. I'm like, wow. Like, we have so much information to share with you guys um, and in, in really exciting ways. And so that's what's next for us is really doubling down on that customer experience and Thinking about ways that we can connect with them. Did you see the video? Speaking of my ne- my niece, did you see the video where she does uh, Zoe's hair with the puff cut? I think I've seen that. Wasn't it on the feed? Did on my IG feed? A while ago? Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe. But girl, if not, email it. Yes, I'll email it because she is like all about. She puts her hair in a bun, in a ponytail. Is is Zoe's just sitting there? <laughs> How is Zoe? Zoe got her shoes. Zoe got her clothes. <laughs> Zoe's, <laughs> Zoe's <laughs> naked sometimes. <laughs> I bet. One side. We're we going to fix that. <laughs> one, you know, but Zoe's hanging in there. Lord, Lord. We got some Lord. stuff for that. <laughs> Which is awesome because I'm like, okay, I need that Christmas gift type of idea stuff, all that good stuff. But thank you so much. We have to do this again. Yeah, Lisa, this was fabulous. Thank this you for having totally me. Totally fabulous. Totally fabulous. Are you going to, well, I was about to say, the world is closed. I was about to say, when are you going to be in Atlanta again? Because it was about this time last year when we saw each other. No, it was uh, November. It was November. Yeah, it was November. And that's when we saw each other for the first time. But it was like, yeah. hey, girl. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, if the summer, because you know, it is the all the natural hair fests happen during the summer, like Essence and Curl Fest and things like that. So maybe by that point, they'll be doing things in Atlanta again. Prayerfully. Well, we will, you know, we have our, we're going to have our last show, um, Ditch the Band 2021, <laughs> 2021 in yeah. July of next year. So maybe you, maybe you can join us for that. I think Zoe would, be, right. would definitely fit for that. So I have, you know, before you blow up and, you know, you become, you have, I have to like have six different people between right. me and you that I have to clear, get clearance from. <laughs> Hopefully. Hopefully can, I don't get to that point. You know what? Yes and no. Sounds like work. It does, because that's the you know, right. you like, I got to manage all them folks. No, but hey, it'll, it'll get there. I just want one person to carry my purse, oh, my, my bag. <laughs> I just want someone to manage my inbox. Oh, you went. Now, that would be good for you, because his, his inbox makes, it it's just bad. makes me nervous. I it's mean, bad. if I looked at my inbox and saw 700 emails, I would never, <gasps> I would... Right. I only have 12 right now. And, and that's the, <laughs> stressing you out. They're all 12 important emails. They all require work. They need some type of document. <laughs> you need to read something. Got you. 700. Gotcha. Yes. I'm, I mean, some of that is just unwarranted. Excuses. Emails. <laughs> right. That, that I just need to push on out. Mm-hmm. But. All right. Well, um, again, thank you, Yalista. Mm-hmm. I just want to hear your mom. You should do like a little sound bite of your mom saying your name. From start to finish. Oh <laughs> she be like, why? Why is the camera in my face? What, you, what is this for? <laughs> she don't like that. Right. And um, So tell us where, where folks can find you. Yes, you know, yes. All your handles, yes. all that good stuff. So Healthy Roots Dolls is, as I just said, Healthy Roots Dolls on Instagram, on the Facebook, the website, healthyrootsdolls.com. Twitter is Roots Dolls because Twitter has a character limit. Um, and then myself, Yalitza Jean Charles, my Instagram is black girl versus the world. And my Twitter is the Yalitza. I post lots of selfies. That's about all I do. Awesome. That's our next question is letting people into your personal space. That's another podcast that we, that you, you look, you like, nope, like, <laughs> never, <laughs> never. Like, not the kid. Nope. I'll have a whole family and a husband. Ain't nobody ever going to know. <laughs> Got it. Say not the way. internet right and i'm not pimping out my family every now and then i do my children but you know 
there's gotta be boundaries because like there are you know there are some people that are a little bit crazy and you know i i don't even think i have the time to craft a, a narrative around my family that's a whole other like that's a whole dedication to like your brand and your storytelling mm. like i don't have the energy for it so i'm just opting out <laughs> yeah i got you i got you girl well thank you again for joining us yeah. for a podcast from idea to invention it's for inventors and small businesses we are signing out like we always do love you lista love you take care be blessed and be a blessing bye 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 (laughs) thank you so much